Hello and welcome back to another episode of Fully Booked, the Hidden Gems author podcast in which Craig Touch and myself, Roland Hume, talk to some interesting figures and leading lights in this crazy industry we are in of writing and self-publishing. And today we have a very special guest who we're very excited to talk to. She was actually recommended to us by Anna J. Stewart. Uh, Anna did a podcast with us recently, which she spoke about how difficult it was to, to keep on top of a huge cast of characters across a 12 book series. And, and she sung the praises of our guest today, Abigail Owen, who is, you describe yourself as an author who must be organized and you help other authors with that. So Abigail, we are delighted to have you with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about in the book space. So <laughs> it's one I find um, when I share it helps the most authors. Like I see the most like light up I ideas go off. I'm pretty sure you'll see mine, mine light up fairly soon as well. Uh, and of course, we wouldn't be here without the man himself, the owner and founder of Hidden Gems and an author himself. It's Craig Touch. How are you doing today, Craig? I'm great. Thanks, Roland. Uh, welcome, Abigail. Um, I think that uh, after talking with Anna, we all sort of were like, oh, that's really cool. Those are things that we could all learn from. And so reaching out to you was sort of the natural uh next up because um you do workshops even on this very topic uh do you do them on is it one note specifically which is for those unaware it's a it's a microsoft product um uh, i think it's part of office mm -hmm. but um so is this uh, uh something that people can apply to other products uh if they don't have it if they're mac users if they don't have office but or is it like you know specifically you know these can only work with one note because of the special features it has or whatever and um, i find it would probably work well with just about any note taking software and um, i'll talk about the differences between like one note and word and one note and like writing it down i know a lot of people are you know manual write note takers and so i'll i'll give some pros and cons both ways and um, but for the most part, it focuses on one note. When I do the workshops, I also get into just time management, task management, planning out your writing schedule, that kind of thing. Now, OneNote, could you just quickly, OneNote, that comes with the Microsoft. It comes with Microsoft doesn't? Office. It's one of the, you know, Excel, Word, et cetera. And a lot of people kind of ignore it because they don't know what it does or they think that it's just another version of Word, maybe. And um, it's very, very I find it very different from Word. It has a lot of the same features in terms of formatting text. So like you can bold text, italicize text, do lists, do tables. Where OneNote is different is, um, is two ways. One is that you're not saving individual files that you then have to figure out which file you wrote what note in and go open it and find it. OneNote is actually, the way I think of it is as like, um, you know, trapper keepers or, um, I can't think of it. Notebooks basically that have um, binders. So binders like, that you can put tabs in. Like we did at school. Topic, and then between the tabs, you have pieces of paper that you take your notes on. That's what OneNote is like, is like those binders. And you can have as many binders as you want with as many tabs in each binder as you want, with as many pages for notes as you want. And it's always open, it saves automatically. So you're not saving the individual files. You just have one note open. Um, which means that if you're trying to find this note or this thing that you remember writing in it somewhere, you can just search in OneNote and it searches through all of OneNote to find you those things. So it's a much faster way of getting to your information quickly. That's great. Microsoft so it's like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like no <laughs> notepad on steroids, right? Yeah. Because actually I've used, I haven't really use OneNote too much, but I've used uh, Notepad plus plus or something like that, yeah. uh, which sounds a little similar in the sense that there are tabs as well. And you know, you can so maybe that's another option that people can uh, try. That's if they don't another one. Them. There's a couple of other note taking options out there. And um, I will say that I so I just switched over to Mac about I don't know, two years ago, I kept um I kept blowing up my PCs <laughs> like I lit one on fire um, on <laughs> Nice. It lit on fire because I used it too hard, basically. Um, and Macs are a little well, so far, I'm finding them to be more robust. Um, and I can use OneNote on Mac. So like the switch over from PC to Mac was very easy if you have Office 365. And um, the other nice thing about that is it means that when you change computers, your notes move with you. Um, when you're on your phone, you can access your notes because it's all on OneDrive. Right, saved on the cloud. Okay, yep. 
and I forgot that, yeah, there is a version of Office for Mac. So it's uh, so that doesn't actually exclude you from being able to use it. Yep. So you can kind of use it across platforms, which is nice because I have an Android phone, a Mac computer. I use it across all the various different devices. Very useful. So, OK, so let us know what you think of how this benefits authors and how, you know, how would they use it to help themselves? So as an author, there's a whole bunch of ways that I use it. The first way I like to tell people, actually, we'll get into the actually managing the books in a second. But the first way that I find it the most useful is workshops, believe it or not. Um, and here's why. I recommend that everybody bring, if you go to any workshop, anywhere that's a writing workshop, a crafting workshop, a business workshop, whatever, bring your computer and take your notes directly into OneNote um, as the workshop is going on. Um, I cannot tell you how many times I've been to a workshop, even if they hand out like handouts, where I take notes or I write on the handout or I have the handout, and then that handout or those notes go in a drawer that I never look at again. Whereas with OneNote, what I do is not only do I take the notes as we're going through the workshop, but then as soon as the workshop is done and it's still fresh in my head, at the top of the notes, I put a to-do list. What do I want to do with this information that I just got? Um, or um, what I'll do is, if it can be, I'll make it into a template. Um, so things like lists, like if they have checklists, I make a checklist template that I can copy into every time I make a new book. I copy the checklist into the new book. So I have that checklist right there to use. It could be tables. So like, um, you know, if you do a plotting workshop, like a Save the Cat, um, you can make a table of the breakdown of the different plot points that you just then fill out every time you start a new book. And it's already created for you in OneNote. You just copy it over to the book. That and must be so invaluable, writing a romance, because romance is like poetry, the way it has, like, such a story layers structure. layers and beats and yes, I mean, constantly. Um, and I have, through these, so I've been doing this for 10 years now, so I have just a, about as many templates as you can think of, and I'll combine templates, like it'll be Save the Cat with Michael Haig with, you know, all the different ones in one template. Or then I'll simplify and I'll be like, today I'm going to blow it up and we're going to do the Star Wars methodology with the hero, you know, breakdown. And um, so you can have all those different templates. But what's nice about them is that it makes them reusable. You're not reinventing the wheel every time you start a new project. Um, it also makes all of those workshop notes searchable. Now, I don't have to go dig through my pile of papers to find that one workshop note that I had that one time. I can search on the concept and find the, the information very quickly. And um, so I would say that that is before you even get into writing your book, just being able to take all of your notes, put uh, not just workshops, articles that you have, copy the whole article and put it in one note because then it's searchable in one note. <laughs> Rather than copying just the link and being like, I'll link, you know, I'll just link to that one thing that I knew about. You don't know those links anymore, 10, you know, a year later, what that link was for, what you found interesting in it. Um, but then again, having a summary or a to-do list at the top of each article, at the top of each workshop of what you found to be the most impactful to your writing style, to the way you do it, is also really handy because it, it helps you kind of summarize. So... I'm trying to wrap my head around the idea that this is like almost like a whole bunch of different documents, like as each tab is kind of like a new document. But when you open OneNote, it opens every single one you've ever written. So it opens them all. The way it has them lined up is down, um, you have one a notebook for each topic. So I have a notebook that's called writing and all my workshop notes go in there. All my articles go in there. I'll also put things in that one like, um, the list of people I've made dedications to, so I can try to remember who I haven't <laughs> dedicated a book to yet, you know, that kind of thing. That all goes in my writing notebook. And so if I have my writing notebook open, on the left-hand side, there's the list of tabs. So for me, there's a tab called workshops. And then next to that is another list, and that's the pages within that tab. So if I've got workshops selected, there's a list of all the workshops I've taken in 10 years with all the notes and all the templates. Then I've got another tab under writing that's called templates. All my templates are listed there. Um, and so that's how it works. Just think of it like you're opening. And then if I want to, I've got a social media notebook. I switch to the social media notebook. Now I've got my tabs that would be, I've got a tab for um, monthly uh, calendaring. So, and then the pages in there are each individual month that I've calendared. I've got a tab for, um, 
oh, Instagram ideas. If I'm lost and I can't figure out what to post on Instagram today, I go check out my Instagram ideas list. That's okay, great. So yeah, so it's basically they've recreated the idea of folders <laughs> by yeah. calling them no notebooks. Of binders and with tabs and, and notes that you can but, take. Well, I, I mean folders in the file system of like Windows, right? Like you'd normally yeah. you like you'd I'd ha I have a writing folder and then in there all my documents, right? Exactly. So it's similar, but now you have them all open and then you can search, I assume, in a notebook or search throughout all notebooks. You can I'm sure that's how it works. It searches right? all notebooks automatically. Oh, okay. So you can't you can't limit it and be like, okay, I want to find this within just this. You notebook. there might be an advanced search. I don't tend to use it because it's actually pretty accurate. So almost always the thing I'm looking for is within the top, you know, two or three search results. Right, right. Okay, cool. So um that's great. The idea of creating all those templates and everything, it's definitely would be a time saver um, when you're doing sort of like those repetitive tasks of workshops or you know, of your uh, book stuff like save the cat sort of stuff that's mm -hmm. uh yeah, definitely a time saver um and then in terms of like the organization of all of this information um how do you sort of generally suggest that people do that is it um you know i we were talking specifically with characters uh with anna but um you know there's obviously a lot more that goes into a book than just characters so sure. do you have tips on on sort of that sort of uh organization absolutely so um like i said i do my notebooks i have those as high level as i can make them of similar things so i've got a notebook for like i said social media i have a notebook for um just writing which is workshops notes um kind of general writing tips that kind of thing and um, then what i do is i have um, a notebook for each series so i have a notebook for my dominion series a notebook for my snowball series etc Within the notebooks on the series, um, I'm a fantasy writer, so I have a lot of, um, I guess you could call it research, lots of notes, lots of notes. <laughs> um, so within my notebook for, say, my Dominion series, which is a fantasy series, not only do I have I, what I do is a tab for each individual book so that I can keep things like editing notes and um, the plot for that specific book notes. Um, I, I will also keep uh, marketing things in that thing for that particular book, like teaser lines or um, what schedule of things that my uh, publisher has set up for marketing that particular book. Um, then, so I've got one for each book, but I also have a higher level tabs. I call them higher level tabs. So I've got a tab called world building. And every note I have about world building goes in there. And usually I'll break those down more specifically. So in Dominions, I'll have world building, here's my maps, world building, here's um, any words I've used to describe the Dominions, any words I've used to describe a creature, any use, words I've used to describe a power. So I keep those. I've got um, tabs or pages within world building for the back history of the gods the goddesses like it's all those details go into just my world building tab so that it's all in one place and not spread out between all the books and that allows me to kind of keep things a little more together the characters so for me the characters i do one of two ways if if it's a fantasy series where it's the same main characters throughout and um, i will have the characters at a higher level tab so it might be a character development tab with all each character gets their own page within the character development tab then. Um, but I also write romance, which tends to be at, at the adult level, a different couple for each book. So then I'll put the character information inside each individual book so that I have them grouped by the specific books. Wow, you are super organized. Uh, it, it actually sort of reminds me of Scrivener. Have you used that? Is it similar? It's similar. Um, I've only used a Scrivener a little bit, um, and mostly I used Scrivener just to do the the cards to plot things out. Um, more than anything, I think the the bigger difference is the way in which um, OneNote can be used for kind of everything. Because like I don't know that you would put like all your marketing things in Scrivener, for instance, and so it keeps it all together. Which means that when I market the next book that's being um, sold in a series that's a year after the previous book, I can go back and look and see what I did for all my marketing on the previous book, what worked and what didn't, and copy it over and make sure I do those things again. 
Again, that's it's trying great. to not reinvent the wheel every time I do something. I mean, that's at the end of the day, that's to a lot of authors, that's the secret of success. I mean, once you find something that resonates with readers, if you successfully do the same process again and again, you could build a career out of it. Right. Plus, it saves yeah. you a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I, I think, think oh, yeah, we're going to go. Sorry, I'll shut up. No, Craig's got a good question. No, no, go, go, go ahead. Oh, I mean, you, you were going to mention time time management as another thing you do, but I guess that that helps with it. I mean, I know f what you one thing you said to me about the, the the characters that I know how useful that is. I told Anna I had a problem in book one of my twelve book series. I introduced a character and his brother, and then I forgot about him in in the next book. So when I introduced him for the next nine books, he was an only child, and it's kind of like readers notice this stuff, and yep. it's so fundamental to have these these things there. I've flip flopped siblings who were whoops this one was older in that book and now they're younger wahaha like all those details i think it does help especially not to have to dig back through your entire previous book to remember it um and so i try as i go as i'm writing particularly when i start doing my edits because if i'm doing my edits i'm not trying to also think of everything at the same time as i catch things like that details that i know i'm going to want to remember this description or this name of this person and who they were even if it's my very minor characters i copy them and paste them over into one note just so that i have an easily searchable list <laughs> yeah and i think it's one thing to keep a list of all those um, details, but you have to remember to look at them, right? So <laughs> you might have a great description saying that he's an only child, but if you, you know, get to the point where you're like, ah, I know this character already, you know, you might forget. And if you're not actually going and checking the yep. details, yeah. Like I, I think if I was writing a long series like that, I think even before I started writing each new book, I'd probably read over all the stuff of every character that's going to be in it that I've already done. So it's that's sort of exactly what I do. I'll read over not only all the descriptions of characters, but I'll read over my original notes of where I wanted the book to go because I might have forgotten a plot point that I thought was really cool, or um, even forgotten like a oh I mentioned this one thing, and readers are probably going to want that loose end tied up, even though it's a fairly minor thing. And um, so I'll read over all of that and literally make notes of, make sure I include in book three, this, 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 this. As a reader, thank you so much, because it so annoys <laughs> me when there's that, the, the little thing, you're like, but what happened? What happened? Did, what did happened they buy the, the card? Did they move the house? About? And the author's like, oh, that was just a cool thing. Maybe I should do something with that. <laughs> yeah, you almost need another uh, notebook or, or, or tab or whatever for, you know, loose ends, plot points, things to revisit, you know, that sort of thing that you can yep. always refer to as you're writing the later books. I think that would be cool. I think that's always sort of the really satisfying thing to a reader when they read a book that weaves, you know, plot points throughout and things happen later that were set up earlier, yeah. and especially if they're set up in previous earlier, books. Earlier, they mentioned this thing and then it comes out here. Yeah, I love that yeah. as a reader. Yeah. Especially if it was if it was in a in a previous book, because to me, that shows there was some planning, you yep. know, as as opposed to just you know, the person wrote a book, did well, they thought, ah, right, write another one, and then they write another one, you know, which I I've had a few series where I felt like this was never planned to be this many books, and you know, there's, yeah. Well, and I am I am somewhere between a potter plotter and a pantser, believe it or not. Um, I started out very much as a pantser. My first book I wrote, um all the scenes and like just as they came to me and then I figured out the plot later <laughs> to connect them and um, not the how I do it now I have found it's much easier to plot ahead for me but if I over plot it's almost like watching the movie before you read the book suddenly you're like oh, I don't feel like reading that book I already know this story right I, if I over plot I do the same thing it's like oh I don't now I have to write it like I already wrote it in my head and um, so I have to be a little careful with how I do that but I think what taking all these notes allows me to do is be that pantser as I go along because some of my more brilliant things come out of what just comes out of the writing as I go rather than having plotted ahead of time but to be able to write that down oh ooh, this could do this over here I've got that note now so that I know in book three I can incorporate it or however I want to move it in without forgetting about it do you use one note for your plotting then I used yes absolutely I use one note for my plotting and um, and I I tend to bump around a little bit how I use the plotting, but for the most part, it's it's a, it's your basic save the cat and, um, you know, movie style plot um, points, just because those are nice bigger plot points that allow me to pants in between. 
Well, I mean, that's but, save the cat is brilliant. I mean, say you can t- uh, save it. Uh, um, what is it? He breaks it down into sort of 90 different scenes and you think of 1500 words per scene and then you, you, you just basically go through a checklist. And if your characters are well built inside your head, they almost write it themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's room within it to for creativity to kind of come out and be like, okay, I need to change how this plot point's going to go because this is really important that I didn't see coming or however that goes. So there's some flexibility with that. But um, there's also, you know, I've seen so many workshops and um, now, particularly for my fantasies, I do tend to incorporate a lot of the hero's journey type plot points, that kind of thing. So I tend to combine plot points depending on what genre I'm writing um, at any given point. And the reason I have so many pen names is I have a lot of genres and each genre has their own kind of twist on how they lay things out. They're like flavors of ice cream. Exactly. Yeah. Still ice cream, but a little different. <laughs> yeah. You like Dan Harmon's story circle, which is like the hero circle. That's vanilla. But then you have romance, which is kind of like strawberry because it is fundamentally different. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And so when you write in different genres like that, and I, all my genres are romance, but they're subgenres of romance, which means now like the fantasies, I have to incorporate all the fantasy elements into and into the plotting and the characters. But in my, you know, sweet kitten Christmas, it's a very different thing that I'm incorporating. And sweet kitten Christmas would be very different to like written by the four horsemen of MC romance. You see these things. Are... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so, but for plotting, do you have specific suggestions on technically, like how to use one note for that? Like, are you putting it all into one note or is it broken into, uh, you know, this chapter one is one note and here are my uh, plot points for it. And then you would later go to that and make that into your chapter one or how would you do that sort of thing? So what I use the most is tables. Um, within one note. And it's very similar to how tables work in Word, only way better. Um, because one note isn't confined to the eight by five or the eight by whatever, 11 and a half size paper. It can expand out. So you can have these massive tables that you can scroll across if you need to, and you can make the, it's easier to make the um, widths. And all you do to make a table in one note, honestly, is you type the, the, like if you've got the columns across the top, you type the label for the first column, hit tab, it makes another column. <laughs> Type the label, hit tab, it makes another column. And when you hit enter, it starts the next row. And so super easy to make the tables. So I tend to do it that way where, for instance, the first row is going to be plot point one. So that might be the, you know, the hook and then the incitic incident and then, you know, the pinch point and then plot point one. And now we're at 25%. And what's my 50% turn? And what's my, so I get the major beats in there. And um, depending on the book, I might go, that's when I might add in all the hero's journey stuff and get the table gets really crazy when I start to add in other points like that. But um, you can map it out. I'll even do things where like sometimes I'm, I know exactly where I want it to end and I know exactly where I want it to begin. So I'll only plot out the first 25% and see where that takes me first and then fill in the rest as I go. Yeah, I think I'm like, way more anal about my plotting than most people <laughs> like i'm i'm plotting out each chapter you know i'm like okay this is what happens in chapter one this is you know and then i'll go chapter two and i'd, I'd have a separate uh well i think i was using scrivener at the time so i'd have separate whatever scrivener uses tabs or well, and you could definitely do that with tables or if yours are much more kind of robust i would suggest separating it out into a page per chapter yeah, Chapter tables one. would probably work. They weren't crazy like details, but they were, you know, all the things that should happen in this chapter. Because yeah. I, I also have just an absolutely horrid memory. So, you know, I would forget everything, oh right? I have to be like, okay, this person goes to the store in this one, and then, you know, in this one, he remembers what he saw at the store, you know, like whatever. Yep. I have to have all that, the key things. All the notes, yeah. And then all the rest is just the filler that makes it into a chapter. Well, and <laughs> if I'm really if I'm really in, on my game, I will layer it out. So I've got the plot point in one column. The next column might be the what's going to happen with the romance in this column. The next plot point might be the what's the fantasy element that's being drawn out in this column. And um, so that I because I like I consider it like layers. I go in and I layer each element, but I want every chapter to have mo pretty much all of these elements in there somehow. Right. So I'll put those in each their own column so I don't forget because it's very easy for me to get really lost in the fantasy and forget, oh, these people need to have <laughs> some kissing moments somewhere in here. 
Um, and so making sure that I'm layering it in together helps me break it out. What you said about, uh, you know, over over plotting kind of resonated with me. It's like part of the fun of writing a story is seeing where it goes. And sometimes the characters do stuff and you're like, wait, I didn't expect yeah. them to do that. But yeah. it's almost you you almost it's almost like you're just receiving a transmission from outer space and writing it down as best you can. And then you share it with other people. And they're like, wow, this is amazing. You came up with it. You have to experience it yourself. I completely, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how I experience it. The plotting helps me know generally where I'm going. The pantsing gets me there through side roads that I did not expect. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, for me, like I start off with a, a detailed plot, but um, things do get carried away and change. And then I just have to go through and re plot out the, the chapters just to make sure, because otherwise, you know, now I've changed stuff. And then if I rely on what I wrote before, it may no longer be valid. Right. And then I've exactly. totally messed everything up. So, well, and yeah. I will have multiple things in my one note where it's like original plotting, plotting from a month later, plotting from editing, you know, when we made major changes with editing or whatever. And um, so that I have, I can, I can actually go back and see, well, this was what I was originally thinking what happened or where did I go off the rails? Cause there's moments in books where I'm like, this is not working anymore. Where did I go off the rails? And frequently it's that I went so far off my plot ideas that I'm, you know, I'm way out here in outer space. And so I need to bring it back in. So it helps to have those previous notes rather than um, changing it every time. And I will warn you with one note, it's not like Word where it saves versions. It saves whatever you've done. So if you delete, it's gone. That says it. Yeah, does it save automatically or you it have saves to... automatically? So it's not you're never creating file, you're never doing file save as create a file. You're just in one note making notebooks, making tabs, writing on your pages, and it just saves it automatically as you're going. Yeah, I think um that's similar because I used Google Docs a lot and it's uh, sort of a similar thing. And I guess that's because it's saving to the cloud. Is there a way to save a local copy or is it always just um, I would not recommend it. I find it's difficult with local copies. And again, it's because the way OneNote works, there really isn't, there's files, but they're not like Word files where you go find your OneNote file and move it here or move it there. And um, they save it all together as a OneNote kind of system. And um, so you want to kind of keep it all together. That's great. I mean, imagine though the potential of it. I was like with, um, having all of your things as a template that you can use for book after book must be amazing what i really love about the the whole plotting thing is the emotion where you where you have to hit the beats to work things out from an emotional perspective and depending on having that template line there is really great i mean because save the cat is really prescriptive it's like your hero who is adjective noun yep. like grumpy Trip. Yeah, on the verge How did he of... save the cat at the beginning so he sets up his yeah likableness yeah exactly <laughs> So um, uh, uh, talking about your your career, how many books you've write under a bunch of different pen names? And you've many. how how many of your books have benefited from this system? Oh, oof. um, so I started with OneNote pretty much off the bat, um, because so I had been working at believe it or not at Intel as a business analyst, um, for about ten years, and while I was at Intel was when I that's where I learned OneNote. Um, and was a way within our team that we shared notes. It's also where I learned all my time management skills because, um, yeah, they move fast. So you have to be able to do manage time very, very efficiently. And I used to give classes on OneNote and time management. Then when I became an author, it all made so much sense that I just moved it in there automatically. So I would say I've written, I think I'm on book 49 um, and all of them were in one note in one way or another. It's just that it's developed into a bigger system. Um, I have to warn when I do my workshops, I show everybody my actual screen and like, here's how I do this and here's how I do that. And I have to warn them ahead of time. Don't be intimidated or overwhelmed by my version of OneNote because this is 10 years worth of notes for 50 books, nine series. Um, and my entire life, by the way, including like all my family's information, <laughs> like uh, just everything goes into one note for me. And so, yeah, it almost causes me a little bit of anxiety in the sense that, you know, we all have grown up uh, with computers and hearing the whole thing of like, you know, save your files because of some, you know, create backups because something gets corrupted and you lose your file, you lose your work, you lose your homework. Now you've got 50 books with all your family information blah 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 everything in in one basically file and if if something happens to that file 
what happens, right? Yeah, I will. So I will just because of that, I've never had a problem with it. Not in 10 years. Have I lost anything out of OneNote? Um, and especially now that things are in the cloud, I find it's much more reliable. So for instance, Word even, um, OneDrive has more versions of my Word file. Uh oh, did we lose one? <laughs> Yeah, uh, to keep going. He, okay. he'll come back. Um, one OneDrive has more versions, like old versions, for me to look at of Word files than Word saves. So that saved me more times than I can count. But I will say that when I finish an entire series, I export it down into like a Word file, essentially, so that I have kind of a backup of my backups. Okay, so you can export certain parts uh, to Word files, like you or can copy save them as... into Word files very easily. That kind of thing. Yeah. Well, that would be like what a copy paste sort yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, because but they it's, have a it's super easy, just very it's it's like Word with fewer uh features, basically. Um so it copies very easily into Word. But if but they have an export uh function. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then uh, something else you had mentioned I thought uh was interesting is the idea of sharing. So how would you how does the sharing work? Do you share your entire OneNote? You share specific. You can folder? share a specific page. You can share an entire notebook. You could share all your notebooks. It's however you want to do it. I tend to share. So, for instance, my husband and I share our family notebook, so we can both get in there and see what our meal list is for the week. For instance, um, with uh, I've co-written. Excuse me, I've co-written a book before, and so that whole notebook for that book was shared with the other authors so that we could both see all the notes and add notes and make changes, et cetera. And if I'm sharing, say, a template with another author, I can share just that template and then say, let me know when you, once you've got it copied into your OneNote and I'll stop the sharing. And um, so you can be very specific with how you share it and who you share it to. It's it's the sharing is pretty cool. Yeah, I was gonna, that was what I was like getting at is for collaborative writing for, for authors that are writing a book or a series with other authors, that sounds like that would be really useful because they're often building this cast of characters and somebody writes something in their book and they have to now add a new character or, or add something to a, the character, uh, um, you know, family tree or, or their description or whatever. And then, so for the other author, they can then just refer to it and, um, yeah. Exactly. And I do find it more robust than say like Google Docs. Like I know a lot of co-authors who share a Google Doc basically, mostly because Google, Google Docs works a lot like Word where you have to have individual files. And yeah, you can do the thing where it has the like titles that allow you to have a breakdown of what the content is, but you still have to like scroll through lots of content versus if you have your notes broken out within the notebook that you're sharing into tabs of information. Here's this book, here's this book, here's this book, here's things like lists of characters, here's the world, here's the town, if it's a small town or whatever. And um, it's easier to get through all that information and see it all in one place. Right, and then the actual writing of the books though, you're not doing that in OneNote, right? You're, you're... No, I still write in Word for the most part. Um, I do use Google Docs on my editor and I need to do a lot of back and forth that's actually within the document, but for the most part, we use Word. Right, that makes more sense. I mean, you need all the formatting and uh, different tools for that, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, okay, so there's a few minutes left. So I have this feeling like you've done this workshop, so there's probably all sorts of other things that you, um, tips or, you know, other things that you talk about in the workshop that we haven't really thought to ask about. So maybe give us some, some of the, the best sort of things you, you can, uh, suggest for authors that are using this. The highlights. So we've talked about the workshop notes, which is one of them. We've talked about books and um, I will say it's a great place to do actually. So what I do with family trees, if you're, for instance, like a historical writer and you need family trees, um, is to do it actually in, in uh, PowerPoint, which allows you to do um, flowcharts very easily. And then I copy that flowchart into my OneNote so that I have it there. Um, I do the same thing with maps for fantasy writers or anybody who's got maps. Um, 
So you copy I, them as an image, I yep, guess? Yes, just copy yeah. it as an image and put it in there. And um, when you copy a article, it automatically puts the link to where you got that article on the in, on the internet in there for you. So you can go back directly to the article itself. And um, which is really handy, by the way, for old articles that I find tend to disappear from the internet sometimes, oddly. Everybody talks about how the internet is forever. Not always. Um, <laughs> So is there, is there a, a function that you use to copy an article? Like uh, when you were mentioning that before, I thought you're just copying, you know. No, I just scroll, control, uh, yeah, copy, you know. paste, and then it'll put the link at the bottom that where you got it. How does it know where you just pasted that from? I have no idea, but it knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, in my, yeah, I don't understand how that works, but OK. It's, yeah, it's I'm fun. Um, and then I use it. Uh, the other major function I have for it is social media and marketing. So um, I use it to do I use tables to do a social media calendar. Um, every month. So I've got a month worth of social media calendar because I'm doing social media for three different pen names. So I have to break it out and be like, what are the major holidays this month? What are the major, you know, what major things do I need to be doing? What marketing things am I signed up to do and make sure that I'm promoting those and, or don't forget to, you know, hop online with you guys <laughs> and do, and talk about one note. Um, and so social media is a good way to do it. Also idea lists. Um, if you see somebody doing something as a marketing thing on Facebook and you're like, I really like how they did that, that had me interested, make that, put it in your idea list for Facebook. If you see a post for um, on Instagram that you thought was really cool that you'd like to try on your Instagram, copy the image, stick it in your OneNote so that you have an example of it. Um, that when you finally get around to organizing your marketing for that week or month or however you organize your marketing, you've got ideas right there available for you. And I, I use it for lists a lot. Right. But if you're using it as a calendar, though, I, it doesn't give you reminders or. It doesn't give like reminders that. or anything. It's more like organizing the month so that you are not doing a ton of memes in a row. And um, it's so that you can kind of see the whole month and be like, make sure that I break it out and have different kinds of posts that I'm hitting all three pen names that I'm not missing any major um, moments. And then I'll use something like, um, right now I'm using smarter queue, but that or a hoot suite or something like that to actually schedule your, your posts is helpful. Um, but to see the whole month in a shot where I organize it all out before I even start scheduling those allows me to schedule those even more efficiently. And then, um, do you for calendars type stuff like that? Do you um, do, is there a built-in template? Or you've created a template that sort of like has like all the days or whatever, and then you just pop it in. I created a template, and it's basically the first row is you know the day one, two, three, four, five, right, and then the actual day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because you get things like Throwback Thursday. Teaser Tuesday. So you want to make sure that you're doing those on <laughs> the correct days if you're doing things like that. Um, then I usually have a row for each of my pen names. Um, and then I've just recently started a Patreon. So I've got a row for my Patreon of what needs to be posted when for which levels. And um, it, it usually goes along those lines. Um, and then actually, and there's one more row, which is um, major events. So that's where I put things like holidays and something that's going on in my life that I want to share about or that I should remember that I can't post on that day. Like, so I put it in there where it's like, don't bother to post. Yeah. And I'm sure that helps too with um, just, just not repeating stuff. You can look at what did I do last Thanksgiving? Well, I don't want to do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's that or, um, I even will look back at like last month's and be like, oh, yes, I forgot that I need to make sure that I'm posting about the HEA collective every Saturday. So I remember to go and put them all on the, all on the Saturdays, but only for Abigail Owen, not for Kristen McKenna. Right. That's the other thing with the with the pen names. <laughs> yeah. yeah you, man, your one note must be very, very complicated. <laughs> it is a large, large document. <laughs> <laughs> but everything's in there. And then like all, like I said, all my family stuff is in there and that includes things like, um, you know, links to their school information. Um, so that it's very easy for me to get to go look at their grades or, you know, we keep meal lists in there. We keep a list of things we want to work on on the house in there and what the cost of that is going to be. And, you know, things along those lines. Yeah. I mean, I personally have all sorts of um, notepad notes all over my desktop 
And I've often thought that it's so inefficient and, and trying to find something, which one did I save it in? And I don't know. Where, where did you write that is. one thing down? Yeah. Did it get thrown uh, away? <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and I'm, yeah, and I'm obsessive about that sometimes about like, oh, I delete the, I should delete these are old or whatever. And I'm sure I've deleted important things because I wrote yeah. some not line because that was the notepad page that was that open. Was one right? line that had the one thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. One note just keeps it all for you. And I will say for anybody who's just getting started on one note, start out by making just two or three notebooks for topics that you think would be the most helpful for you. So maybe one notebook for the your current work in progress and the series, if it's a series, right? One notebook for social media, one notebook for your workshops. Start there and just start adding to it now. Rather, don't think about, let me go find all these things to add into it yet. You will overwhelm yourself with, you know, how much backlog of information you need to put in there. Just start from where you are. And then when as you need that other information, add it in. Right, and I, I guess uh, you're when you have multiple pen names, I guess you're sort of duplicating a lot of that stuff, right? Yep. It's I, like you yeah. know, so the top level is probably pen name. Yep. And then all that stuff, social media and characters and all that stuff is um, within. Actually, I tend to keep all the social media together so that I can see what I'm doing on each pen name together. Um, and then the notebooks are really just for the books. So that automatically kind of sorts itself out by the pen names anyway. Right. Okay. Yeah. As long as you remember where they pen are, name, which pen name wrote which book, too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, okay. And any other? Uh, highlights that you can think of that are before we wrap it up those are the big things and um, i'm trying to think if there's anything else tip wise that i usually go through the rest of my workshop tends to be on time management like managing your email um how to you know get a little less overwhelmed with the amount of things that you have to do in a day that kind of thing right and where do you so where do you give these workshops is it at author conferences or author conferences or i'll come into you know local writing groups and that kind of thing and and do these i've see, uh, this is my favorite workshop to do so i i give it frequently <laughs> yeah that's awesome how long is it like an hour or? it's an hour i could actually make it a whole week if i wanted to just because <laughs> if i really like because it could be a whole thing where we sit down and we go, OK, let's make a notebook for social media and only concentrate on that together and have people actually piece things together. I can do a whole thing with that. And then, OK, now today we're going to do a series and let's get this in here and let's make this template and let's put this here and let's make this book. Um, it, I think that would be really fun. I haven't done that yet, but <laughs> I could easily make it a long, a whole week long thing. That's hilarious. You like uh, you can give the workshop in an hour or in a week. That yeah. sounds like your one note. <laughs> You know, it's just this massive thing, or it can be just one thing. Or however but simple you need it to be for you. Yep. I think that that makes sense, though, because if you're doing it at more as a workshop where it's like, okay, let's work through let's actually some make examples. It and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, especially if you can, if it's, uh, you know, use their personal actual um, things they're working on so that. It's like what's okay your book and it's fantasy and it's and what do you do social media and then you can set it all up so and then they could actually walk away from the workshop with that all these done. templates and things already set yeah i think that would be really fun <laughs> great well i think uh we're probably running out of time here right Roland? Yes, I'm so sorry for dropping out a little earlier. I it sounds like I missed all sorts. I'm going to be excited to tune into this episode so I can actually <laughs> <laughs> learn what I missed. But yeah, we're coming up to the uh, to the top of the hour. So aside from the part I missed, Abigail, I found this really, really fascinating. And I'm definitely going to go and try uh, to, to see what I can uh, do with OneNote, especially when it comes to like the plotting and things. I think that could be really, really valuable. So if anybody has, has heard this and feels similarly inspired to, to how I have, where can they find you? Um, easiest place is just my website, abigailowen.com. From there, you can get to all my social media, you can get to my email, and that's, that's the easiest place. I'm pretty much on everything. <laughs> That is fantastic. Well, if anybody is watching this or listening uh, as a podcast, make sure you leave a comment down below and let us know how much you appreciated all of Abigail's brilliant insight. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button as well. We really appreciate everyone who supports us. And until then, we will be back next week with another episode of Fully Booked. Thanks so much.